Hello everyone, I welcome you once again to another practical session. Today, the experiment that we are going to discuss, the aim of which you can already see from the board and that is to investigate the reaction between K2H2O8 and KI having equal concentrations. Now, in this case, the first point which I would like to make a reference of and that is this experiment is related to or is based on the principle of chemical kinetics. And the very first thing which comes into our mind when we talk about chemical kinetics and that is time. Yes, my dear friends, the time plays a very important role as far as chemical kinetics is concerned. So this is time-based experiment. Now before I actually start with the procedure of this experiment, I'd like to give you a theoretical background. What exactly happens in this reaction and what exactly we are going to proceed with, okay, as far as this experiment is concerned. So as you can see from the title, the reaction taking place is between K2H2O8 and Ki. So let us first of all see how the reaction takes place. K2H2O8, potassium persulfate. It's going to be reacting with what? Ki, potassium iodide. And that is going to give us potassium sulfate, K2SO4, and iodine is liberated. All right? This is what exactly the reaction is. Iodine being liberated. Now, if I just balance this reaction, this will be 2 K2SO4, this will be 2 Ki. Okay, so this is the first part. Now the liberated iodine is titrated against standard sodium thiosulfate solution. So, standard means the solution whose concentration is already known. This is sodium thiosulfate. So the liberated iodine from step one is being titrated against standard sodium thiosulfate and that results in sodium tetrathiamine Na2S4I6 O6 and plus you get sodium iodide that is NaI. So the reaction involved over here, I'm going to balance this reaction so it gives you 2 Na2H2O3. So we have over here 2 sodium iodide. So you can check it out, the reaction is balanced. Alright? Now this reaction, it's a titration as you know. We require an indicator over here and the indicator is freshly prepared starch indicator. So the indicator is freshly prepared starch. Starch you know it's going to be insoluble in water. So we are trying to prepare a saturated solution of that and we are going to heat it because it is insoluble. It becomes a turbid solution because as I said it's insoluble so you don't get a clear solution. Okay, as like phenolphthalein, you get a clear liquid. It's not like that. It will be a turbid solution, milky solution. Okay, so you're going to heat it and that hot solution you are going to use it, few drops as an indicator. Okay, so this is my dear friends, the theoretical background. The reaction first of all between potassium persulfate, that is K2H2O8 and Ki, both of which have equal initial concentration and then they are being reacted with each other. Iodine is liberated. The liberated iodine is treated with the standard solution of sodium thiosulfate. It gives you sodium tetrathionate and you get sodium iodide. And it's a titration. So we are going to make use of an indicator and that is a freshly prepared starch indicator. 
All right, my dear friends. So this is the theoretical part of this particular experiment. Now I'll be explaining you the procedure of this particular experiment. And after the procedure, I'll take you to the laboratory and I will actually demonstrate this particular experiment. All right. Now, my dear friends, I'll explain you the procedure over here. The procedure involves two sets. Okay, set one and set two. I'll explain you about set one. Then set two is very easy. Just a minor change. All right. So, in set one, what are we going to do is, we are being provided with two glass stoppered bottles. Okay. So, imagine that these are the two glass stoppered bottles. Now, in one of the glass stoppered bottles, I am going to take 50 cm cube of 0 0.05 normal K2S2O8. Okay, in one of the glass stopper bottle, 50 cm cube of 0 0.05 normal K2S2O8. In the another glass stopper bottle, 50 cm cube of 0 0.05 normal sodium. Uh, I'm sorry, Ki, potassium iodide, okay? And both these bottles has to be kept in a water bath to attain constant temperature. Now, my dear friends, as I said, that this is actually a titration. So for a titration, we require a burette. So the burette is filled with 0 0.002 normal sodium thiosulfate Na2H2O3. If you can recollect my dear friends, just few minutes back, I used the word standard solution of sodium thiosulfate. Standard solution means a solution whose concentration is known. All right? So we are going to use a known concentration 0 0.002 normal. So you are going to fill the burette with this uh, solution of sodium thiosulfate. Now what we do is make sure that ice is available. Okay. Now as I said the role of the ice because it's a time bound experiment so it will stop the reaction corresponding to a particular time interval because time plays a very important role in this particular experiment so the readings which I am getting should necessarily correspond to a particular time of the reaction you take some time for titration isn't it so I don't want that time also to be included in that okay it will result in an error so just to make sure that our experiment is errorless, we are going to make use of what? Ice. Few pieces of ice, my dear friends. Okay, many times what happens? There are students, you know, who like to play with ice. So bulk of ice is being added into it. No. Only one or two pieces of ice, sufficient enough. Okay? Make or do the experiment with fun. But not, my dear friends, at the expense of the result of that experiment. All right, so this is what is the rule of ice. Now what we do, my dear friends, is that we have made sure that the ice is available. We have prepared the starch indicator. We have prepared the burette solution. Okay, fill the burette with 0 0.002 normal sodium thiosulfate. Once all these arrangement is done, next thing what you do is you mix the contents of the two bottles. Now the choice is yours, my dear friends. Either you can transfer K2S2A into KI or vice versa. The reason is because both the solutions have equal concentrations and equal volumes. Alright? So that's the reason it's your choice. So you mix the contents of the two bottles and after mixing, one of your bottles of course gets empty. Okay? So keep it aside. 
Now the reaction mixture. I use the word what? Reaction mixture. The contents of both the bottles will be in the water bath. Okay, throughout the experiment. It will be what? Throughout the experiment. Please keep this in mind. And when you mix the solutions, please note the time. This time is called as zero time. Okay, this time is called as what? Zero time. So I mix the contents of both the bottles. What I need to do is, I need to put that reaction mixture now only one bottle in a water bath. Okay, please cork it. Okay, the reaction bottle make me make sure has to be what? Corked. Don't keep it open, please. Into the water bath, and that will remain in the water bath till you don't complete your experiment. And note the time as well. And that time is considered as what? Zero time. Alright? Now, what you have to do is, you are going to take the readings. Now, there are two possibilities over here, my dear friends. Let me make it very clear. So that when you are going to see the later part of the particular video, that is the actual demonstration, you don't get confused. And that is, one possibility is, you can take the readings at intervals of 5-5 minutes from zero time. Or you can take readings as intervals of 10 10 minutes. Okay? The choice is yours. But then whatever it is, we are going to keep it constant. For set 1 and as well as the same thing for set 2. Now in this particular video, the demonstration which I am going to show, in that I have shown an interval of 10 minutes. However, please concentrate on this. However, you can take readings at intervals of 5 minutes also. But whatever you do it, please make sure there is uniformity. Okay, it's not that you're doing it for 5 minutes and then after say 15 minutes, then 20 minutes, then 25 minutes, then 35 minutes. No. If you're keeping an interval of 5 minutes, keep it 5 minutes. Okay, if you're keeping an interval of say 10 minutes, keep it 10 minutes. And that has to be, okay, done in set 2 as well. Alright, so please keep this in mind. Now the question is, how the reading has to be taken? So whatever time interval that we have decided, okay, so after that time interval, say if you have decided a time interval which I have shown in the demonstration part, that is 10 minutes, so after say 10 minutes, what I'll do is, I'll pip it out, 10 cm cube. Obviously, we have the reaction mixture in conical flask, which is already containing ice pieces. But I don't want to waste any time because this is a time-bound experiment. Okay? I don't want you to pip it out and then you are running around for the ice and all that stuff. No. Okay? And you are going to add around, say, 5 to 6 drops. of starch indicator. Okay, five to six drops of what? Starch indicator. The solution is going to become blue. And then titrate against the period solution. So titrate it. The color change, or we call it as the end point, is blue to colorless. It is blue to colorless. And note down that particular reading. Corresponding to that particular time interval. You are not going to take the reading at zero time. That is immediately after mixing. No. You are going to wait. Now as I say, either at intervals of 5-5 minutes you can take the readings or at the intervals of 10-10 minutes. Alright. So this will be your first reading. And then you continue for the second reading, for the third reading, that way. If you're going to take it at intervals of 5 minutes, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, like that. If you want to take it at 10 minutes, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, like that. So you can take around, say, 6 readings. 
But please make sure that the time interval is constant. And you're going to report the reading corresponding to that particular time interval. Procedure remains the same. The butter will always remain in the water bath. Okay, please don't bring it out every time. Even during pipetting also, please make sure that you are only going to open the cork of the bottle, not the entire bottle out of the water bath. The bottle, the bottle is going to remain in the water bath itself. Okay, just removing the cork, pipette it out. Okay, how much you are going to pipette out? As I already said, and that is 10 cm cube. Okay, in the conical flask. Am I clear with this? So this is my dear friends about set one. Okay, this is about what? Set one. Now, my dear friends, as I said, there are two sets. If you understand the set one, set two is very easy. In set two, what are we going to do is, if you remember I said, minor changes. So I just prove it to you, what that minor changes are, and whether those changes are really minor, or they are real major ones. Okay, and that is, I'll make this as set two, now, instead of 50 cm cube, I'll be writing here 25 cm cube of K2H2A to which I'll be adding 25 cm cube DW. DW means distilled water. Same day here also, 25 cm cube and plus I'm going to add 25 cm cube of DW. This is the only change, my dear friends. That's it. Okay? Everything else remains the same. So I've added water. So I've done the dilution. Okay? So concentration will become less. Because dilution and concentration are inversely proportional. So 25 is now diluted to 50. Because total volume becomes 50 now. So, two times dilution. So, concentration will become half. You might live with this of what we had in set one. Otherwise, everything remains the same, no change at all. So, now I guess you are very confirmed that the changes were, yes, they were minor changes. Okay? Only this bottle's reagents were being change. Instead of 50, I have taken 25, but then I have added 25 of water. So the total volume still remains the same. 50 over here, 50 over here, so 50 plus 50 is 100. Alright? So this is my dear friends, the entire procedure and the theoretical aspect of this reaction between K2H2O8 and KI. Now my dear friends, get ready to come with me in the laboratory where I have shown the practical demonstration of this experiment so that you understand this experiment very well as to how you are going to take the readings. So, come along with me to the lab. Here we go. Yes, my dear friends, uh, welcome you all for the practical session of chemical kinetics. The aim of the experiment is to investigate the reaction between K2H2O that is potassium sulfate and KI. Alright? So, I have already explained you the theoretical part. Let us now go into the practical demonstration of this experiment. So, here we go. We have a two glass stoppered bottles. Okay, these are two glass stoppered bottles. This is a water bath. We have the two reactants, K2H2O, potassium persulfate, and KI. Now, there are two sets in this experiment. So, in the first set, as I told you, we are going to take 50 ml each of both the solutions, that is, KI as well as K2H2O. Alright? So, I'll take first of all K2H2A. I have a 25 ml of a pipette, so I'll be pipetting out twice. Three. 
So this is the first 25 ml. Once more, we are going to put it out. So this way, 50 ml of K2H2A, potassium sulfate is being prepared. Now we are going to cork it and put it in the water bath. So this is done. We just now wash it. with water and then we are now going to prepare out 50 ml of KI same procedure my dear friends 25 ml 25 ml twice so this is going to be KI So this is the first installment of 2500. This is the second installment. So, 50 ml. Immediately you need to cork it. Please don't keep the KI bottle open for the longer period of time. Please cork this as well and put it all in the water bath. Okay? Now, my dear friends, as long as these two bottles are inside the water bath separately, no eggs. Because the reaction will start only when we are going to mix the two solutions. Alright, so no worries about it. So keep it separately. Now, you need to make the other arrangements here. What are the other arrangements? And that is, buried has to be filled with sodium thiosulfate, Na2H2O3. Okay? You need to fill the buried with it. So what happens is, as I explained in the theoretical part of this particular experiment, when I mix the two solutions, iodine will be liberated. The liberated iodine we are going to titrate with sodium thiosulfate. And that is going to give us sodium tetrathiamate. Alright? We have a starch indicator as well. Okay? So, next thing is, as you know, this is a time bound experiment. Okay, we have to take readings at intervals of 10, 10 minutes. The reading that we get should necessarily contribute towards that particular time interval. So, if I am going to take a reading corresponding to say 10 minutes, then the reading should correspond to that 10 minutes only. So for that purpose, we have to stop the reaction. So for that, what we need to do is, we need to make some use of ice. Few pieces of ice. We are not preparing or making ice cream. So please remember. Okay? So only few pieces of ice. So all this arrangement has to be kept ready. Okay? So once again, I repeat. What we need to have is, we need to fill the unit with so it has something, okay, the ice is available, the starch indicator is also available, so we will make sure that everything is available, and then only we will mix the two solutions.
All right. I hope after this everything is clear to you. Now, my dear friends, once the arrangement is ready, what we are going to do is we are going to remove both the bottles out of the water bath. Okay. One is containing KI and the other is K2H2O. Now you are going to mix the contents of both the bottles. Now remember, my dear friends, the concentration of KI and K2H2O, both of them are same. The volumes are also same. So you can mix any of the solutions into any one of these. All right. So I'll make use of a funnel. Open the cork of both the bottles, and I will. Transfer the contents of one bottle into the contents of the another bottle, and the most important thing is this bottle is empty. Keep it aside. Immediately, you are going to tip it out. You are going to cork this. You can see this yellow color as I was telling you about the liberated iodine. Just stir this solution clockwise, anti-clockwise, and immediately you are going to note down the timing. This is zero time. Okay, immediately you are going to note down the time. Okay, right now over here at this moment it is three o'clock in the afternoon. So three o'clock, three p.m. is the zero time. Am I clear with this? All right, and this water will remain in the water bath. Till the end of the experiment. Now I got ten minutes because my first reading will be ten minutes from zero time, twenty minutes, thirty minutes, forty minutes, and fifty minutes. I have already done the major part of the arrangement. Now what I need to do next thing is that I need to take few pieces of ice, as I said, into this. Okay, I'll be taking few pieces of ice. That's it. And keep it as it is. The burette is already filled with sodium thiosulfate. As soon as ten minutes are over, with the help of a pipette of ten ml, I am going to prepare out the solution into the conical flask. I am adding few pearl drops of starch indicator, and immediately I will be doing the titration. So I need to wait for the timing of three ten. Now ten minutes are done. So what I do is I just open the cork of the bottle. The bottle will remain in the water bath. Immediately I'll cork it. I'll put it into the conical flask, which already contains. Few pieces of ice. And now, two or three drops of starch indicator. You can see it's blue coloration. Now, we are going to titrate it till it becomes colorless. I kept. A white background so that it becomes very easy for the change in the color to be notified. The real solution is sodium thiosulfate. Okay, so that's it. We are getting the colorless solution. Same point is going to be from blue to colorless and. The reading that we are going to get over here is going to be seven point eight. Okay, it's seven point eight. So this is the first reading. So in this way, you need to repeat the procedure, and that's going to be for intervals of this was for ten minutes. Similarly, twenty, thirty, forty, and fifty. So you will be getting five readings, and all these is going to be from zero time. What was the zero time for this particular experiment? 3 p.m. So this was the reading corresponding to 3 p.m. Okay. So this is the entire experiment. I hope you have understood this first time very well. Similarly, my dear friends, once this entire experiment is done, 
same way you have to do the second step. What is the difference, my dear friends? Yes, the difference is that this time we are going to take 25 mm of K2H2A and 25 mm of KI. But to that, you are going to add 25 mm of distillate. Okay, so in the first step, what we did was 50 mm of KI, 50 mm of KQH. So this time we are making the concentration half. So initial concentration becomes half. Alright? And hence the reading also will be less. So the reading of the second set for a particular time interval will be less as compared to the same time interval for set one.